Hello and welcome to the video. This video is all about trimming, specifically for fixed wing models. Now, by the side of the controls on your radio, there are all these little doohickeys and these are the trims. And trimming is part of how you get your model flying properly. Now, this is one of a whole number of videos aimed at newer pilots and that is part of this playlist. I'll put the links down below. So if you are brand new to flying fixed wing, uh, flying wings or whatever and you are trying to get to grips with it or maybe you've been a multi-rotor pilot and you're coming into flying fixed wings this little series hopefully will cover all the basics about what you need to know and this time we're talking about trimming so let's talk a little bit about what is trimming uh, you can see the text by the side of the slide here basically what it means is that when you've got a model trimmed properly and it's flying straight and level if you let go of the sticks on the radio, then it should continue to fly straight and level. And if it is, then that's working okay. Now, trimming isn't unique to small radio-controlled aircraft. Even big aircraft, uh, full-size, has it as well, and they usually have something called trim tabs, which are small parts of the control surface that you use to trim to trim out any tendencies that the vehicle has to get rid of that wandering that it may have. And if you've ever made a paper airplane and thrown it, then you've probably already done trimming, or kind of trimming. If you make your paper airplane and you throw it, and it just does dives into the ground, then you kind of, you know, you play with the paper at the back, you push it up a little bit so it flies straight and level when you throw it. Similarly, if you throw it and it does a big loop over your head and tries to hit you in the back of the head, then you again, you play with the back of the bits of paper so that it flies straight and level when you throw it. And it's exactly the same whether or not you're talking about a paper aircraft or a Boeing 767. So now we know what trimming does, let's talk about why we need it. Because surely if you set all the control surfaces properly on your model, so they're all kind of in line with the wing, then that's where they need to be, right? Well, no, actually it isn't. And that's because of two things that are going on. When the motor is spinning the prop on the back of the model, it's not only spinning the prop in one direction, it's also trying to spin the model in the other direction as well. And that torque roll is something that you have to correct for. And that's usually corrected with a bit of roll trim on your radio. And then the model is always pushing back against that torque roll as the prop is spinning. There's also potentially, how well you set your centre of gravity up, uh, a tendency for the nose to rise or sink a little bit as the model is flying around. And you need to do a little bit of trim on the elevator. So again, it's flying straight and level. When you look, take your hands off the sticks, away you go. Now, usually what you'll find is for things like torque roll, the more powerful motors, the bigger props that you have, the more of an effect it has trying to turn the model in the opposite direction and you might find that as you give it more throttle there's more torque roll and there is a tendency for it to try and spin the model in the opposite direction but usually you kind of trim it for cruise throttle I tend to trim it about 50 60 percent so when it's flying around cruising uh, I can take my hands off the sticks so let's talk a little bit about how we actually trim a model like this when we are out on the field. Now we're going to use the trim tabs on the side of the main controls. Uh, most of the radios that you'll find that are designed with fixed wing in mind will have these little trim tabs and these are used to input the slight correction. So let's give an example here. Let's imagine that this aircraft is flying along. We'll look from the back because that's kind of easier to explain. So let's imagine that it's always banking in this direction. Now I'm going to have to put in a control input on the sticks to bring it back straight and level. But if I let go of the sticks, then it goes in that direction. Now what I can do is I can then push the trim in the direction that I'm having to hold the stick and that will then put in that little bit of stick movement automatically for me. And what I need to do is keep testing it and just adding more trim until I can take my hands off the sticks and that torque roll is taken care of and it maintains straight and level flight. 
And that's the trick. You always move the trim in the direction that you've got to hold the stick to hold it straight and level. Similarly with the elevator. If the nose is always sinking, so you have to pull the pitch stick of the elevator down on the radio, then you would click the trim down in the same direction. And it's usually a relatively iterative thing to do too. You're going to have to have two or three goes. Uh, when that first start, I'll usually click it three or four times. Uh, you can set up things like extended trims on the radio, but if you have your model set up well with the center of gravity in the right place and everything set up well mechanically, again, I'll put my link down below to my video on how to set a plane up well with things like UmpTX. It should only require five or six clicks of trim to get rid of any torque roll and maybe one or two clicks to get the elevator where it needs to be so it's flying straight and level. One of the tips I'll give you is that in OpenTX you can, once you've got it all set and you're happy, save the trims into the sub trims. Now what that means is that in the main screen of the radio the trims are shown or they can be set to be shown in the main screen. And once you start moving the trims around, then you only have a certain amount of movement in either direction. And also, if you accidentally bump the trims and move them in between flights, you don't know where they're supposed to be. So once you've got your model trimmed, my top tip will be go into the outputs, go down to the very bottom and say copy trims to sub trims. That will store the new trimmed positions of all the control surfaces and it will reset them the main trims to be back to the neutral position. And when you come to the net model again, if the trims are all in the middle position on the little screen, then you know you're good to go. And also if you do need to give it an extra click or two, maybe the battery's in not exactly the same place, then you can take care of that without having to worry about you moving everything around. But you have that place defined and saved as this is what trimmed should look like. However, there are a couple of times when trimming is not a very good idea because what you're actually doing is you are moving the servo away from the middle channel position. Ideally, you want all the linkages at 90 degrees and you want equal throws in either direction. And you might end up with it like this model. You might end up with it when it's trimmed, it'll actually look like this rather than the control surfaces be in line with the back of the wing. They're both slightly up and this one's up a little bit more and that's where it needs to be to counteract the torque roll and also to keep the nose straight and level. And that's absolutely fine. That will work great. But what about if you're using something like a flight controller or a stabilizer? When you're moving those trims, what you're doing is you're moving the middle channel position for that channel. By default, that's 1500. So it goes from 1000 to 1500 is the middle to 2000. And the trim is actually clicking it very slightly in one direction or the other to make the midpoint of the servo be where it needs to be to put the control surfaces at the right spot so it flies straight and level. However, with a flight controller, that's not a great idea. Flight controllers expect 1500 to be the middle channel position. So when you're using a flight controller, you never use the trims. Or if you do, you make sure you've read the manual thoroughly and you understand what's gonna happen. Because if your radio is sending uh, 1450 for the roll command, not 1500, what the flight controller hears is, oh, hang on a minute, wants to go slightly one way or the other. So it will always be drifting. And that is why doing things like trimming with a flight controller isn't great. There are other tricks with flight controller that you can use. Uh, go and check out my builds. Things like iNav have like a servo trim mode where you fly straight and level, you flick a switch to put you in that mode and it learns where the controls need to be uh, to, and then sets that as the middle channel position. Things like Ardu Plane are really smart. You can tell it to figure that out automatically and it will do the trimming without you having to do anything on the radio. Just by flying, it'll figure that out. Last tip I'll give you on this stuff is that in OpenTX there is a really cute feature. That cute feature is called Instant Trim and that allows you to set up a special function in OpenTX so when you're flying and you're flying straight and level, you can just pull the momentary switch, I would suggest, just pull it once and that will then instantly, rather than you have to kind of move the trims a little bit at a time and do it iteratively, if you have your model flying straight level, you can just pull that switch once and bang, OpenTX will immediately write those channel positions as the trims and that's kind of instant trim 
Uh, it's very, very handy for a maiden if you have no one else around. I'd recommend having a look at that in the manual. Uh, put a link down below for the OpenTX page where you can set that up. But instant trim, again, I've got videos on it, other people have as well, can be a really cute way if you feel like you haven't quite got enough hands when you're flying. Uh, you can just fly straight and level, use instant trim to get you close, and then just maybe just nudge it in using the trims by the controls. But hopefully that helps explain what trim is, what it does, how it works, how you do it, and some other tips and tricks for things like OpenTX2. Again, if you have any questions, do check out the playlist down below or leave a comment and I'll point you in the right direction. Thank you for watching my video and watching right to the very end. If you want to find out what I'm currently working on, you can follow me on social media by searching for Painless360 in the usual places. If you'd like to become part of the inner circle, then you can become a Patreon. Details are in the description and you get lots of additional benefits. Check out the playlist section on the channel too. I organize all of my videos into playlists and it's called something like Introduction to or for Beginners. All of the content is aimed so that you can start at the very beginning and it teaches you that subject starting with simple principles and moving up to teach you everything you need to know.